Mbappe Kylian, the angel who gave France the 2018 World Cup trophy, became Mbappe the nigger when France lost to Switzerland in the eighth final of the 2021 Euro competition. Most football fans in the world are aware of this acute racism in football. It was rife in the 70s. John Fashanu, a pioneer black to play in England, went through the crudest form of racism in football from 1978 till he retired. Fashanu John recalls his experience. This is racism in England particularly. You know, even getting into football, I actually got into football in a racist issue because the school teachers said, hey, look at that black boy over there. I could even hear them. Hey, he's good at running. Hey, that black boy, he can jump higher than the white boys. That black boy, hmm, he can run faster than the white boys. Let's put him in the football team for the school team. That was how I got in. It wasn't because I was a fantastic player, it was just that I was stronger than the other white boys. And that's what I got in. And how did you get into professional football? You know, getting into professional football was difficult. Because, you know, I had an older brother, Justin, uh, who's late now, who was the first black one million pound footballer in the world. So whenever you hear the name Fashionu, people want to see someone who's good. Any of my sons now, they go to a club and they say, excuse me, sir, my name is Fashionu. Oh, hey, this boy's good. You don't have a choice not to be good. You have to be good. And I was in that exactly the same situation. Justin Fashionu meant that you've got to be good. I trained, I played, I worked hard. Um, and we just got in through my brother's endurance and the fact that he wanted me equally to follow him as a professional footballer he helped me let's be just very honest he helped me and uh, which was his first club that you got into the first club i got to is a club called uh, norwich city in the the, the north of uh, england a very i'm sorry to say very white club um and my first job i got in at 17 my first job was to clean the toilets. After cleaning the toilets, my second job was to clean all the professional footballers' cars. Because remember then, we're talking about an era when there was very few blacks. And anybody who was black, you are mandated to do a working job. You must get out there and do something. Nobody wants to see a black man enjoy themselves in the UK then. So, you know, I found it very difficult having to clean out toilets, when I came to play football, guys. I came to be the next Pele, I thought. But there I was, and sometimes you get some of the players who put your head down the toilet because you were a small young boy, and when you get on the pitch, of course, the racism starts. You played against Liverpool and some other teams. How did the crowd react towards you? You know, um, some of them are laughable now, and I can laugh with a smile, but I assure you, for 10, 15 years, when I mention some of the situations that I've been through, you cry. I was playing at the, one of the biggest Italian clubs in the world. Maybe I shouldn't say the name, but I'm going to. Inter Milan, the San Siro Stadium. Beautiful place. And I was playing for Aston Villa in the English Premier League. We were playing in a cup competition. And as we came out in Italy for the match, I thought the crowd were loving me. In my silly mind, I was thinking they were liking us. So I went over to the crowd. The crowd were going, Fashi, Fashi. Well, that told me that they know me because they're all calling me Fashi. The Italians can't say Fashanu, they'll say Fashi. So I ran over and I waved. I waved to all the crowd. Thank you for supporting us. Thank you. And they told me, come closer. Oh, this is fantastic. We were just starting the match. And so I went a little bit closer. And then they all put their cups together. Red cups. I won't forget it. And I went, wow. And they went, whoosh. Whatever was in the cups came all over me. It came over my head. It came over me. 
No, was it 19,000 people watching? Then I realized by the smell, it was their urine. They had pee peed in the cup and waited until I came and then they threw it all over me. Because somebody out there, whoever it was, must have had an issue because there was blood in his urine and the color of the urine and the blood was all over my shirt. We were wearing white. Now the game was supposed to start in two, three minutes. The referee refused to let me go back to the tunnel and change my shirt. So the first 45 minutes, I had to play that match stinking of other people's urine. And I've got to be very honest, when they threw the urine in the cups, I was not expecting it. And so I had my mouth open, laughing, smiling at the crowd, and a lot of the urine went in my mouth. And I felt like bursting into tears and going home. But that's when you know you're a professional footballer. That's when you know you've got to lead by example. Even my own teammates, Kevin, were laughing at me. But to be a strong man, to be a leader, to be a captain of the team, there's nothing that should get you down. That was one of my worst experiments, or, or should we say experiences, that I think I've had. But what about England itself? This was in San Siro, that was in, in Italy. Italy. And was there any other experience you had in Ooh. England? Oh, Kevin, so many on a daily basis. On a daily basis, uh, I was playing against uh, Everton and um, just for, as I came out of the tunnel, I heard this very strong voice telling me, black bastard die, black bastard die. Now, those words are certainly not encouraging, but I could hear the voice of this person shouting, black bastard die. And I thought, who in the crowd would want to kill me? I mean, this is a game of football, guys. We're here to who wins or lose. So I looked and I saw this young man. And I saw him, tattoos all over his face. And I saw this is one of the strongest races I think I've ever seen. And it got to me. As we started playing the match, the ball went over to his side of the pitch where he was standing in the crowd. Many people, not just him, many people. And as I went to pick up the ball for what we call a throw-in, I heard his voice, you black nigger, die. Oh, oh, ice. For the first time, I put the ball under my arm. I now marched into the stand. My closest friends, Vinnie Jones, Dennis Wise, and two other players saw what was happening and they came with me. The referee was blowing his whistle, telling me to come back down now, come back down now. But I had crossed that line where you, you have that line when you're, you know you're calm. My, I'd gone crazy. And I walked up and I pushed my way through the crowd, all of them shouting at me, and I grabbed him. And I held on to him. Then I was getting kicked and punched. My other players came to support me. And I told the young man, citizens arrest. Citizen's arrest is a law that you, we have in the United States, in the United Kingdom, where you can personally arrest somebody for a reason. As they all started jumping up and down the crowd now and pushing and shouting, I refused to leave. And because of who I was, a lot of the fans were scared to touch me. So I held him and I waited until the security officers and security guards came up and they said, John Fashioner, what are you doing? And I said, it's not about me, it's about him. I'm arresting him. They took him away. He was still shouting, spitting at me, but I refused to punch him. I refused to help hold him, to hurt him. All I did was I held his shirt and I went down. And everybody was clapping. Everybody was cheering. And even his own friends now were ready to push him out. And they pushed the young man out and he went into... The holding cell. You were facing this situation, John. What was the attitude of the football uh, at the Federation in the United Kingdom? You know, um, the British, uh, well, I say the, the British, the English Football Association have always wanted to keep peace. And when you have somebody, you're in a peaceful relationship, you don't want to breach that peacefulness. So whatever would happen, they would always put it down the side. Oh, that was terrible. But they would never actually do anything about it. If they'd have got up 
off their high horses and got off, off the seats and actively said, we do not want to hear any monkey chants. When you go on the pitch, you hear them going, ooh, 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 ooh. That's monkey chants, meaning we hate blacks. That's the interpretation of it. If we hear you singing, nigger, 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 we know that you are racists. And we will arrest you, and that means you have to leave the stadium. Quite simple, but they never said that. For 21 years, they never said anything. They would listen to you and they would say, oh, that was terrible, that was very bad, oh, that's horrible. But they won't do anything about it. Uh, but, 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 John, this was a situation prevailing, and you kept going on and on and on and playing Aston Villa, Wimbledon, and so many clubs, Norwich City. What kept, what was that motivating force? Why did you keep on hanging in there? You know, I asked myself, what was I doing? You know, even with the, one of the, the, the first clubs was uh, Millwall, and Millwall was well known for hurting blacks. They never had any black players. I was one of the black, the first black players. You can imagine, when I was transferred from Lincoln City, which is a very small little club in the third division, and I was transferred to a second division club, sorry, a third division club, possibly the most racist club in the country called Millwall, I took the challenge. And I said, I'm going to go. And when I got there, I went in, I was a record signing. 1.5, million pounds. Record signing. And when I went in to see the new players, I said, hello, everybody. Hello, buddy. Nobody looked at me. When I went to the captain of Millwall and I went to shake his hand, he pushed my hand out. This is the first day. This is me meeting the players. When I went out onto the training pitch to train with the manager, I now realized I am the only black. Some of these players have not actually come close to black people. During the practice match, as I knocked the ball, I heard, give it here, nigger, give it here, nigger, was the words. And I excused myself for the offensive words, people who are watching, but I just want to be very truthful, and it's the bitter truth. Give it here, nigger. That's a player who was on my team. We're on the same team. So I let it go. Peace is better than war. Again, the ball came to me. Nigger, nigger, give me the ball. I let it go. I now realized that this young man is a racist. And I went to him and I said, I won't say his name. I said, can you stop calling me nigger? I'm not nigger. If the worst thing you can do is call me black, I will have to accept that. But calling me nigger, I'm very offended. He started laughing. The ball came again, he said the same thing. This time I went over to him to confront him and we broke out into a fight. As we broke out, broke out into a fight, to my surprise, I thought that my own teammate would come and the best they could do was to break up the fight. I'm the only black in the team. And all of these players are my teammates and we're playing on Saturday. So we want to get in a good mood together, a good groove together. They came, they turned on me. All my own teammates turned on me and started to fight me. And even the team that we were playing that day, which was a smaller team, a Millwall team, they started to fight me as well. So I now had, I don't know how many players fighting me, kicking me, ripped all my shirt. The manager called um, Michael Graham, George Graham, that's it, George Graham, He said, John Fashionu, leave. I had to leave. I had to go down to the hospital. The player equally had to go down to the hospital. Not one of those players, not one of those players spoke to me for a good two weeks. Every match I just sat there on the substitute bench. Because not that I was not a good player, but he knew when I got onto the pitch, the other players went crazy, they don't want a black player, we don't want a black player, we don't want this. So I realized that for me to get into the team and to get the respect and become the, the captain, which I eventually did, I had to calm down. I had to now, shall we say, sweeten everybody. 
I had to, and I'm sorry to say, dash money to different players. Because remember, I'm the record signing. I'm the one who's got all the money. So I had to dash to the players so they were all calmed down. And after one month, I was now selected to play. Thank <laughs> you.